ladies and gentlemen, friends, colleagues, and listeners, here we are again. We've got another uh, another podcast session for you. And um, what we tried to do when we started off with these podcasts is to is to interview and um, and have a discussion with people who've come into the industry, how they came in, and what keeps them in. So today we've got Helmut Haringer, who's the founder of Jet Pano. Helmut. Thank you very much for joining us, sir. And I understand you're you. you're there in south in the south of Vienna. Yes. So correct. beautiful, beautiful location there with the lakes. So fair play to you. No wonder yes. you got a smile on your face. <laughs> yeah. Working and living where others uh, take their holidays. So couldn't be better. Yep, fantastic. Right, Helmut, what I'd like you to do first, please, if you don't mind, can you just give us a little bit of uh, an insight and a background into what Jet Pano is and what it actually does? Uh, well, JetPano uh, was found in order to provide the industry with one of the leading edge of technology for uh, high quality pictures, virtual tours, even videos uh, to make the sales easier. Uh, we both know that there are a lot of charter operators out there and a lot more uh, aircrafts for sale. And I was just thinking, okay, uh, it must be uh, a company for me, what I would found that provides the highest quality available out there. So uh, always improving, always trying to make the best out uh, of the products that I photograph, but without being fake. Uh, this is one of my key argument is uh, to make it look as it is, not yep. too much and not uh, too less. Yeah. Okay. So so in in in, in basic terms, what you're doing is you're giving anybody who wants to either charter, experience, or purchase, or sell, you're giving them the opportunity to best represent the model of aircraft and the interiors and everything else that goes with it so that they, they get exactly what they expect and there's no disappointments. Yes, this is true. And I'm assuming you're able to give the perception of space. Uh perception of space uh, i'll try to give the angle that is is the same angle that if anybody else is is really standing inside the aircraft exactly so exactly. there's nothing too narrow or too wide uh, there are lots of products out there that are not representing what the aircraft is really like uh yeah there are a lot of factors uh, who play into this and i try to to keep it as realistic as possible without being as i told you without being fake yeah and, and w when you do the pictures and the virtual tours, um, is that also aligned with, you know, with, with dimensions, with sizes, with space areas, comparisons, so people can, can see something and really, really get a feel for what it would be like, you know, if they were on there, if they charted the entire aircraft or if it was a part charter or, or you know, just for them to see how comfortable they'd be subject to the amount of hours. This is my highest goal. Uh to show them this is what you can expect, this is what you're paying for, uh, and not some 20-year-old uh, uh, company provided images from the manufacturer uh, with three refurbishments or uh, 10 years in charter, and it looks completely different. I want to tell the people, you're standing inside the aircraft, even if you're sitting at home, or if you're a broker, you want to know what you're selling to your client, because yeah. it's your own reputation. Yeah, no, perfect. And and I would imagine you get a lot of, uh, especially people who are selling, they yes. would be very interested in using that particular service. And equally for people who are buying, because no matter what position you're in, if you can buy an aircraft, there's still only so many you can actually go and see. So to, you know, to reduce that list before they make their final decisions, this is an ideal service. Of course, it's, it's an asset for brokers or, or dealers. And even now with the Corona situation, um, it's getting a lot easier to get a detailed view of the aircraft, uh, even more with the, with the virtual tour and the photos than with the video. Yeah. With the virtual tour, you can stand inside the aircraft as long as you want. With the video, you have to pull, put on pause. Uh, you have to work with what the video provides you. Yeah. And I'm giving the people the freedom to look around, to, to have a closer look to everything that they want to know. Okay, so you do everything with how the seats are extended, whether they can be, whether they can recline back, the 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 uh, the journey to the toilet, um, how comfortable it is to eat, 
how comfortable it is to discuss, have meetings. So every single un unique selling point of that particular aircraft, you're able to exercise in that virtual experience. Yes, this is the, the, the goal. That's fantastic. I mean, that's, that's also what they're doing now with properties and especially during the first shutdown, uh, lockdown rather, you could see people that were exploring their, their capabilities and their understanding of how to best sell a house without somebody being there. Yeah. And one of the things that always, always amazes me is this, this, this um, size, you know? So when you see pictures taken with the drones or you see pictures at certain angles in a property, it's very, very difficult to re realistically appreciate the the actual size you know yeah and I'm, I'm i don't mean to be to be disappointed or anything but in most cases when i've actually turned up and seen something it looks it's, a lot smaller big on the internet than it is in real life it's, yeah yeah if you watch them on the web it, it looks like you could play football inside of one of the rooms and then yep. a step inside oh it's tiny i wasn't expecting yep. that but yeah 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 now, do, do, you, do, you think that's, do you think that's something that people need to make themselves aware of? Or do you think it's something that the parties who are offering the, the technical experience should have more accountability to make it more realistic? Sure. I think that the parties who are providing these images um, should know how to deal with it. Um, I mean, it's, it's a lot easier in an aircraft because it's furnished. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if, if you look at an empty room, uh, this could be 10 square meters or 20 square meters. You have no, maybe the windows, but you have no reference. Yeah. Uh, if you have nice furniture or a cup of tea, a cup of coffee, magazine, uh, you actually know, okay, this is the magazine. What can I expect out of the room that I get? Yeah. And this is why it's easier for me to provide a scale that is more realistic than with a naked aircraft or a naked room or something like yeah. this. Yeah, no, no, that's good. It's good. It's good. Good to have that moral, that moral sort of compass to make sure that people are not disappointed because at the end of the day, if you get disappointed, as soon as you see something, it's a terrible, that's a terrible experience. Huh? Sure. It's, it's, um, how can I tell it at, at the end of the day, uh, it's coming back on me. If I do uh, something not in the in the right way, because it's my reputation. If I get a broker uh, who tells me, "Oh, man, I can't sell the aircraft that you're taking photos of because they come they look completely different in real in real life." Yeah. Uh, I get accounted for as a broker. My my client is taking another broker, and I'm as a photographer won't be booked by him again. So yeah, it's it's. Uh, always to give and to take. I want to give the people the right images, the, the right imagination. And sure, uh, nobody does anything for free or just of joy. We're all here to to uh, get some money for our living. So uh, it's it's always, it has to be in balance. Yeah, and also, also do the very best. Now, obviously on your website, there's a huge variety of aircraft that you've... Uh, that, you know that, you, that you've taken photographs and videoed etc and it's really interesting to look at so we'll obviously include that reference on the on the website um during the podcast but what i want to cover now and and it's leading up to the to the big question but you've got a military academy background yep. okay and uh Therizan, yes yeah? Therizan, Therizan, yeah. academy okay right so you were there and uh, you did very very well <laughs> in the ranking I so i wouldn't say that yeah no no you did very well now also you've you've done um photography in various other areas events horse riding commercials cruise ships you've been a taxi driver you've worked as private security in bars hence my offer for a beer when we eventually get out of this lockdown <laughs> um close protection travel agency sales private equity sales um, also, uh, to um, um, assistant to the CEO of a branch of the Austrian Lotteries, okay, a truck driver for the Coca-Cola support trucks for the Christmas truck tour and Youth Olympic Games in Innsbruck, chauffeur for VIPs, and the one that stood out for me, the 2011 official tour photographer for David Hasselhoff Hoff, and his comeback tour through Europe. Now, that must have been some fun. Oh, it was actually, it was one of the greatest experience. And uh, it was, uh, how can I tell that? I, 
I wanted to make something else. Uh, I applied for uh, a photographic academy in Vienna and they declined me. And I thought, yeah. okay, um, I wasn't good enough for them. And two weeks later, uh, I was at the first concert of David Hasselhoff in Wiener Neustadt, my, my former home, where I was at the military academy. And tried, oh, he's coming back, um, yeah, hero of my youth. I, I want to see him on stage. Yeah. And uh, I was uh, photographing for some event portals uh, in, in Austria. I had the connections and I um, yeah, registered for that and said, OK, um, I'm in, in, in the front of the stage with the other press and uh, did some photographs. Uh, and then a particular elder man I've never seen before uh, contacted me there directly uh, at the concert and said, oh, who are you taking photos for? Look, I told him, OK, only for me. I'm a fan, just for me, some, some nice images. OK, yeah, get up on stage and, and uh, take some photos from there. Uh, OK. Yep. Why not? I, I knew the security guys because I was working for them as well in the past. And so, okay, I entered the stage and then crawled around and then did some shots. And one, one second, the half turned around, looked at me, looked at the elder guy. The elder guy said, oh, okay. And he performed as a thing. And yeah, uh, and after the show, uh, I learned that it was, it was the manager of, of David Hasselhoff, a Viennese guy. And uh, yeah, they told me, good, uh, we want to have the photos. And I said, okay, and the next time, next day you're in Graz. Um, I will try to process the pictures during the night, burn them on DVDs, oh, not in Graz, in Vienna, sorry, in Vienna. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, bring them to the next show uh, with one, uh, I want to make the next pictures of the, of the tour, of the uh, concert in Vienna as well. Okay, yeah, no problem. So I spent the whole night burning the 1,500 pictures, sorting them, burning on DVDs. And yeah, on the next day, I went to Vienna, uh, dropped off the, the DVDs and taking photos of the concert. And after that, okay, the, the deal was done for me. And I just wanted to know where to send the next pictures of this show. And after that, uh, what went down to the wardrobe after the show and then door opens. Okay, David wants to see you. Yeah, okay, <laughs> uh, shit, what I've done wrong. And I was sitting at the computer, clicking through the photos and said, okay, you're my photographer now. You're working for me now. Okay, no problem. So, and the next three months we toured through whole of Europe and it was a really great time. That's fantastic. And I mean, I, I, I like the fella. I think he doesn't take himself too seriously. Yeah. He's always had good fun. And um, obviously he's very popular. He's very popular in Germany. And he was he was there with the wall when the wall came down. And, you know, he's a pretty good singer as well. He ain't a bad looking fella. Yeah. I mean, there's not much else that could go wrong, I think, for him. But I take it it was a good fun tour. Huh? Yes, it was a really nice experience. He's a really great guy uh down to the ground he's, he's he's not some some guy with his nose up in the air he's always there if, if you want to have a chat he's, he's always making fun so really nice crew as well it was really nice, nice what time. a great experience huh yeah so no wonder no wonder you've always got a smile on your face that's <laughs> brilliant helmet now also you've been a firefighter you've got yes. your paddy license you've got your paramedic qualification you're a helicopter pilot you've just finished your you've got your license now i think have you no uh, 25 hours left another 25 hours brilliant you love traveling you love cooking and eating yeah what, what is freeletics what's that freeletics is actually uh do it yourself at home workout without any equipment you just need uh, two by two meters of floor yeah and it's with your own body weight I don't know if it's if it's popular outside of, of uh, Germany or Austria because it's a Munich based company. Yeah. And yeah, started 2012, I think, uh, more or less uh, with some efforts. <laughs> but uh, I like it really much. I, I don't like going to studios or something to gyms. I, I'd rather be with myself when trying to uh, beat myself up. Okay, fair enough. You've also got parachuting experience from the military, 
horse yeah. riding. Oh, okay. the military. Yeah, and you also enjoy the old Israeli self-defense technique, Krav Maga. Yes, it's one of my favorite experiences. Yeah, so it's no wonder, it's no wonder that uh, romantically you would be quite a good catch. And the fact that you met and got engaged to, to your future wife um, when you first met her at one of the Krav Maga sessions, I joked with you at the beginning. I'm not sure whether it was her who pinned you down or you pinned her down. Yeah, that uh, remains a secret. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> keep that one. Keep that one for a special occasion. But um, that that. Do you want to explain a little bit about Krav Maga? Uh, well, it's it's actually uh, developed by the Israeli Defense Forces. Yeah. And uh, the main goal is to be easy to learn and efficient to use. So uh, I did some uh, Wing Chun and, and Far East uh, sessions as well in my youth. In my youth, yeah. Um, but uh, the Krav Maga is, is, yeah, you do the first session and you feel a lot better. You know, uh, small, small hints, small grips, uh, where to hit, what to do. And it's all made uh, to be stress proof. So even if you are threatened of your life, uh, at some time, you know what to do. And uh, main rule is on the streets, there are no rules. So uh, you take what you get. If it's a roll of, of a magazine or a spoon or an umbrella, uh, you use anything that you have uh, for your self-defense. In, 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 in a way that it forms a weapon. Yes. So it's, it's really efficient, it's easy to learn. And even with a few years off or almost one year off right now, I, I'm i pretty sure I would uh, know what to use in an emergency situation. Right. So I'd have to remember where where and if I pick an argument with you and look around what's on the table. Uh, no, 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 <laughs> no, no. Not but in it's... that case. No, but it's it's all it's always useful, huh? and I like what you said there about uh, you know rules on the street. There are no rules on the street because you know in this day and age, unfortunately, there's some terrible things that can happen. So it's always good for people to know how to defend themselves. Yeah, I, I don't want to talk bad about the actual time, but I think you know it better than I. Than a uh, few ages before, few uh, twenty years, uh, if you had an argument, you. Yeah, you check the fist somewhere in your face and two minutes later, you're off for a beer together again because, okay, it's nice right now. But the situation right now is uh, even if you're lying on the ground, uh, you have to be happy that you're not going to be pushed or a knife yeah, yeah. down and even if you're lying down. So, yeah, it's, it's getting tricky. Yeah, it's a tough one. Yeah. Please God, please God, Helmut, as a result of this bloody COVID virus, people will start to care a little bit more and respect each other so. a little bit more and, you know, realize there's more, you know, there's more to life and, and people should be allowed to enjoy themselves as best as possible. Yep. But moving on with that little eclectic background. So how did you then come to decide with all of these skills, with all of these experiences, I really, really enjoy aviation photography. Uh, well, uh, long story short small kid uh, based in upper austria in my birth town uh, my neighbor is in is in uh, flight instructor yeah and the fascination was always there uh, but i had issues uh, with my eyesight i had six and seven uh, dioptries yeah and so uh, this road was closed for me so uh, yeah I got into the military, I got into photography. Uh, and as I mentioned before, I was working for an event uh, photography company called Scene One in Austria. And uh, yeah, drunk people photography, um, as you know, bar photography. And uh, with that, I was uh, in Austria. We have the tradition, if you want to call it like this, uh, if you finish your A-levels, yeah, uh, you're going to Italy, Turkey, Greece for a big party. Yeah, and uh, it's called Summer Splash. Yeah, 
Yeah. And uh, I worked for Scene One at Summer Splash. And the next few years, I worked uh, directly for the Splash Line for the event agency. And uh, within the crew, there was one guy who was a student pilot, uh, Cessna 172, I guess. And I said to him, okay, uh, if you finish your license, I'll take some photos of you and your small flying tin can. And uh, yeah, then we, we lost sight. And after one or two years, I got an email. Uh, yep, you're doing photography. Can you do 360 degrees? And he yeah. sent me an example of an Air France uh, 747, I think, of the cockpit. And I said, looked at it. I said, yeah, why not? No problem. Yeah. Well, um, I had no idea. <laughs> I, the next few days, I uh, was trying to uh, rent some stuff, looking at some YouTube tutorials, uh, order some stuff. And the first time I really tried it uh, was when I was actually at the hotel in Basel <laughs> for the trip for the next day to photograph two Legacy 600s. So uh, this could have gone completely wrong, yeah, but it didn't. So I uh, worked it out pretty well with rented gear and no experience. I think uh, two suitcases full of stuff, uh, tripods, rented cameras, uh, everything. Tried to make the best out of a situation that had no idea. Uh, yeah, and this continued. This was 2013. And uh, I started Jet Pano in 2016 after three years of trying to improve the quality of my product because yeah. uh, this was my very first and uh, until this time my only client it was uh, called air it's it's called airx a maltese uh, company yeah and uh yeah i improved my style i improved the editing i improved the processes to keep the downtime as low as possible and in 2016, I was ready for myself to go on the market with it. So to uh, go in the public. And this was, I was I, when I first joined uh, the eBase. I was attending the eBase and tried with my small hand luggage trolley where everything was inside uh, to get some new clients. And uh, it worked. I, did, I had some really nice feedback. I had the opportunity to photograph two jets directly at the eBay's for Air Independence, a Munich-based yeah. company. Yeah. And from then on, uh, hard work. And a few years later, here I am and, and uh, making my living out of it. So it was an, it's a nice experience starting from nowhere because actually... 2013, nobody was doing this yeah. except for yeah. one or two uh, small companies. And right now with the, with the uh, advantage of the, the, uh, the equipment, you can do it with the iPhone right now. And there are some uh, products for one-stop solutions. So everything is done by its own. And, and uh, it, it's, yeah, it became really easy to do a 360 tour. But uh, quality matters. Yeah, no, no, quality always matters, and that's the difference. And and that's obviously Helmut why you know why you've done so well. Um, let me ask you: do, do, is there like um, is there like an awards or a competition? You know, for the the best representation of of private aviation, do they do that at any of their um, events or conferences? I'm not actually sure. Um... I'm so focused on my product. I, I should uh, look a little further if there are such competitions, but uh, I want to focus on the customers. Yeah, yeah. And, and even if it would have benefits for me, um, I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, no, I, was, I, was just, I was just curious because, um, you know, it's, it's, it's like an artist. You know, you, you, get, you get several artists, they've got different slants on the same subject matter. Yeah. But something sometimes just resonates with you and, and it just looks incredible. Do you have um, like do you have your favorite your favorite album or your, your top 12 pictures that you've ever taken? Oh uh, top 12 <laughs> or well, top 10, uh, top six. Yeah, it's 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 uh, mixed up. Uh, so a lot of them are uh, landscapes from my travels. Yeah. Uh, one of them is uh, Sunset at Easter Islands. And 
yeah, it, it was just great. And, and then, you know, flying uh, aircraft, helicopters, my fiance, <laughs> uh, pretty much everything. So it's, it's pretty hard to, to break it down to 10, 12 pictures, but most of them traveling. Yeah. Yeah. You'll have to put yourself a little, uh, a little book of uh, photographic memories or, or, um, you know, um, specialist photograph things that you're proud of, you know, for uh, the different models of aircraft that you've taken. Yeah. Uh, this is actually on the website. So my, my small, uh, from, from small to big album from the Phenom 100 up to the A340. Yeah. Uh, it's a well mix. Yeah. No, it's fantastic. And listen, what, what, what are you going to do once you've finished your hours on the helicopter license, the rotary license? Uh, well, uh, actually, I'll keep photography uh, for my main income because right now the situation for pilots is, yeah, you know, yeah, not yeah. the best. And uh, trying to get some hours because with 135 hours, uh, yeah, you got your license, but yeah, that's all. Yeah. So trying to get some experience, uh, scenic flights, maybe some work flights, camera flights, everything to, to have it next to each other. And yeah, let's see what the future brings. But I want to keep it up as it's helicopter flying is, is a one time experience. It's, it's, it's great. It's, yeah, not really to compare with anything in this sector. So. Yeah, we did a we did a podcast with the commercial one of the senior commercial um, uh, senior management of Sikorsky. Oh, yeah. Dream. Uh, very, very passionate, engaged, skilled lady. And she took her license as well. And she got her hours up by um, by deliveries. You know, she was delivering yeah. um, new helicopters, etc. That's how she got it. And she was just describing, you know, sometimes when she was when she was sitting there and she's flying across the plains and the states and she couldn't believe that you know that was something that people were giving her the privilege to do yeah. and it was part of her job yeah, true and you know she was just living the dreams incredible incredible yeah, yeah. If, you, if you got this far uh you have a real real good uh mindset because uh, a lot of people i know are not really appreciate what they're doing appreciating what they're doing and then this is I'm really privileged. I can earn my living with photography, uh, even if it's uh, with, with cruise ships, traveling around the world, seeing countries that, that I've you know, not even known that they existed before. Yeah, yeah. With all the beauty, with, with really, really nice uh, people there and, and with, with an environment that you just you can't see enough of, every, of everything. And That's yeah, I think, uh, and I think you're right what you said there, you know, so many of us in life, you fall into something, or you do something that you think that you really wanted to do. And then it sort of loses its its gloss and it loses its, uh, I don't know what you want to call the word, but it, it just, and then you sort of just do it because you have to or because, yeah, because you know, it's you too late to make more, a change. Yeah, yeah more actually, something to pay off. Yeah, and this was actually... I was a little afraid when I when I started as a professional photographer. I never learned it. I have no degree in photography or something. Yeah. Uh, this was one of my greatest concern that I lose the fun about it. Yeah. And but now, yeah, I'm, I'm 35 right now. Uh, and it took me 24 years uh, to know what I wanted to do. I was at the military. I, I tried everything. And uh, I was lucky enough to see, okay, it's, it's fun, it's a great experience, but it's not the right for me. So I tried something else, something new. And uh, right now, I'm doing this right now for uh, 2008, 13 years now. And it's still fun, of course, Everything has is, is, uh, not so funny days or funny sides, but at the end of the day, it's, it's always, I'm, I'm really, really uh, privileged 
to be able to to fulfill my dream and and get some money for it where other people have to pay thousands of euros to to travel around and i can make my living with it yeah so this is really really good it's a lovely it's a lovely thing it's a lovely thing to talk about but it's a lovely thing to see somebody who's actually living the words they're saying and it comes across you know it comes it comes across it it, it really does and to be able to do something that you love and enjoy and deem it as fun you know i think that is one of the most treasured values that anybody can have but what you've also said as well as you know not not being not being afraid but being brave enough to keep trying something new until that something special becomes something that you can do and you can enjoy yep this is true it's wonderful it's wonderful so what's next what's next on the menu now with regards to um you know the aircraft the filming the the virtual are you seeing it develop into something more you know what 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 avenues are you able to explore now with regards to promoting either you know chart uh, new new i would imagine now with the way things are that you know a journey for for people who've never considered that they would like to have private aviation as something that they would do or even thought that they could afford it so if you're able to do these you know welcoming adverts and, and you know letting people know what the experience is like it must be something special huh? yes uh actually this is uh, i don't know who this said i think it was churchill uh never let a crisis go without an opportunity yeah yeah ne never waste a good crisis yes uh, and I, I think this is one of the possibilities of this whole COVID, everything, what is bad, actually really bad, uh, but never forget to try to improve. Uh, yeah. There are a lot of people right now sitting in their homes, not, not knowing what to do and just staring inside their mobile phones uh, for Instagram or Facebook or something, uh, looking at things other people are doing uh, and, and get more and more sad yeah uh, but why not reading a book or learning an instrument or a new language or something like this or uh, try photography something everything is possible we, we have the internet we have technology you can do literally what you want and so with the photography as well uh, i think with all this situation out there right now, uh, the private aviation is one of the travel sectors who, in my opinion, are having a really good situation right now. Yeah. Because people, if they, uh, business travel will always be there. Yep. You can't yep. do anything on Zoom or the internet. You have to send someone somewhere. And uh, if I have the choice as a businessman for traveling economy with 200 other people in one plane, uh, having to uh, look on the schedule of the aircraft and the, the airline, maybe not getting to my, my target in one piece of, of flying in, in one stage uh, and having a private jet or business jet and getting there when I want, where I want, uh, I think this business will be growing. It is, I think, right now within the, yeah, crisis, yeah, no, it is. the crisis, it will it will be uh, better again. And that's what I hope that, uh, how to say, um, there are a lot of charter operators out there, a lot of aircrafts to sell. And there are also a lot of businesses in private aviation and business aviation who don't want to spend thousands of euros to improve uh, the presentation of the aircraft. Yeah. But I think there will be some day uh, that they will see that the quality is what differs and what makes the difference from being booked or being grounded. And uh, spending, if, if you want to say for uh, a G650, the production fee for a virtual tour is 4,000 euro. Yeah. So it's less uh, than two hours of flight or than one hour of flight with the G650. It's an investment. It's it's not lost. You're getting yep. it uh, within the next job. Yeah. 
So uh, maybe this can be the chance of this crisis that the people see uh, you need to define yourself by quality and not that you got a golf stream in your hangar. Yeah, there are a lot of companies with a golf stream in the hangars. Yeah, yeah, no, you're right. But how many hours is being used? Yeah. 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 No, no, I, I, I agree with you. What do you think? What do you think now about focusing on the sanitization and, um, you know, the, you know, the, the, the sort of the, the clean care element? Because lots of carriers are focusing on that now. But obviously, with the reduced touch points, that would be a good focus, would it not, for you know, filming how how much you know how less the um, the number of touch points are between private and traditional, and focusing on the cleanliness and the hygiene and the you know how quickly you can get somewhere, the fewer people you come in contact with, how long you stay at the, at the FBO or wherever, you know, yeah. it's a it's a it's a much better it's a much much better approach. Do you think there's that that's worth you know exploring with the with the filming and the videos and the pictures? Uh, it will be, I definitely think. But um, I'm thinking about hygiene and cleanliness and, and tidy aircraft should always be a top priority, not not, yeah. not only here in the COVID situation. So uh, I hope that people are getting this out of the the images that you got a lot more space. You got a lot more comfort. You're a lot safer inside your private space. Yeah. Uh, even when you go to the airport, you got the small VIP terminal. You got a small security screening. Uh, you have your lounge. You have everything for yourself and maybe your fellow travelers, but not to be shared with hundreds of people. Just to think of the washrooms that you get or yeah. Uh, the yeah. It's everything. The quality is completely different. I don't want to speak bad about uh, regular airlines or, or this experience. They're doing the best they can, but you're facing a lot more, a lot bigger uh, queue, uh, yeah. a lot bigger mass of people. You can't clean after everyone. That's just not possible. They're doing the best. The flight attendants are doing their best. They're doing a really good job but you can't do everything a hundred percent. This is yeah. just not possible. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a tough, it's a tough thing, but I like what you said is that, you know, quality, quality counts everywhere and, and things like that, that are, you know, bringing people's attention a lot closer nowadays. They're things that should be in place irrespective. So that's the most important thing. What do you, what do you think, or what would you wish for in 2021 now? for the industry and for your business in particular? What would be the ideal the ideal horizon to set on 2021 for, for uh, Helmut Haringer? My ideal would be getting rid of this virus, a lot of them, uh, because you just, you can't do what you want right now. We're giving up our freedom for this. Uh, actually, travel is bad. Even getting married, <laughs> I can't get a date to get married. Uh, everything is, people lost their jobs. So uh, actually it's, it's would be a little bit too much to wish anything more for me in my business because I have survived until now. Even the lockdowns, uh, I still have my clients who are really loyal to me and said uh, during the first lockdown, okay, we will wait. Yeah, uh, there's no need to to rush or do something uh, in a less less good quality than you do. So just tell us when you can go, and it's fine for us. Uh, even now, I'm going to Holland tomorrow for uh, Jet HQ, yeah, a real good customer of mine, um, who are, I think, they're really happy that someone is doing uh, the travel and and taking care of their inventory um to help them doing their business because yeah. it it's not getting any easier for anyone so i think anyone should try to do his part or her part uh, to take care for others not even for themselves their families so it depends so much on, on their job how they're doing uh, that they stay healthy so i think the best would be to get rid of this virus but don't forget it yeah 
Yeah. Uh, this last year was a tough one. And uh, maybe in 10 years, uh, we will make fun of this period of time. But uh, I hope that the people will uh, see what they're getting back as soon the situation is over, that they can get to concerts, they can uh, get for dinner, meet at the bar, travel, yeah, or just yeah. doing their job as they're supposed to do. Uh, just think of the health system. Yeah, yeah. And I hope the people appreciate what uh, this sector has done and even the politicians. Yeah, I know it's, it's easy to say, oh, the politicians are doing everything wrong, but uh, I don't want to do their job. You yeah, can't, no, no. You can't get it right. This, the situation is, is unique. Yeah. Uh, and everything must work out, must be, must be functioning. And yeah, I think we should appreciate what other people are doing for us and try to give something back. 100%. Couldn't be a better way to give a final message on the podcast. And it's an absolute pleasure to see somebody with so much passion, logic, common sense, and a, and a, a sparkle in the eye with a bit of fun for what they do. Helmut, I think it's absolutely superb. And I'm sure anybody that's got you working with them, they're, they're over the moon because of your focus on, on quality. And you reminded me of one thing. There's a place I definitely am going to try and go back to as soon as I can, which is Schladming. You know yeah. Schladming? I know Schladming. Yeah. <laughs> definitely gonna, a lot of times. Yeah, I love it. Definitely going to try and get back there. Listen, thank you very, very much for joining us. Wishing thank you great you success. Helping. And um, it's, it's, you know, it's great that you've come into the aviation industry through, through many different doors. But I think the message is, you open enough doors, there's going to be there's going to be one there that you're going to love to walk through every day. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me and taking your time. It's an absolute it pleasure. Speak with you. Yeah, and if you see Mr. Hasselhoff next, you know, give him our give him our very best. <laughs>